Hello, Jamie Ballard here of Cupcakes and Haystacks. So welcome to my passive income life. So in this video, I want to show you how to create a realistic iPad mock-up of your digital planner to use within your Etsy listing images. Now, if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to my channel so that you can see more content like this in the future. And if you find this tutorial to be helpful, if you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up so that I can get my content out to more people. All right, so you can see here that we are going to be working inside Canva. Now this first image here, this is the one that I use to introduce all of my digital planners that are landscape orientation in my own Etsy shop. I kind of use this as a template. So my banner and my title always stays the same. I always have um, my website, my little logo, my wooden block, my Apple pencil, my flowers, my little banners, all of those things stay the same. That allows me to have a cohesive branding within my Etsy shop. The only things that I change up when I'm advertising this specific style of digital planner is of course my preview image um, of the inside of my planner and then the background. So I'm going to show you how I create this particular realistic looking iPad. All right, so now I'm going to scroll down to this next image that I have prepared. Here we go. So you can see it looks almost identical to the previous one, but I have switched out the background and I have this empty spot here waiting for me to drop in an iPad. So I'm going to come on over here to where we see elements. And I'm going to scroll down until I find my frames. And you can see it's probably going to be pretty close to the bottom. I'm going to click on see all. And I'm going to scroll down until I find an iPad. All right, and I can see it is right here. There we go. Now, one thing about the iPad that Canva provides you with is it does automatically come in portrait orientation. It does not have an option for landscape orientation, but I have a workaround for that. So let's start off with grabbing these arrows here, and I'm going to switch this around. Now, if you are creating a portrait style digital planner, um, obviously you're not going to have to change the orientation. So that step you can skip. I'm going to extend this out and center it. There we go. And I'm going to click on position and I'm going to move it backwards until it's behind these banners here on the left. There we go. All right, so a couple things that I want to point out. First, you can see that there are no drop shadows attached to this iPad. Um, if we scroll up a little bit, you can see that this, even though that the, there's just a hint of them, they aren't super obvious or in your face, there are drop shadows that make it look like this iPad is actually sitting on top of this wood, okay? Like I had been sitting on, like I had been standing over a tabletop and I had taken a picture, a photo of an iPad. However, this one, you can see that even though obviously there are differences in colors, um, there is no drop shadow that's making it look like this iPad is lifted up above this wooden block. And when I click on this iPad, you can see that there is no option for me to edit this image. I'm going to come back up here. And when I click here, you can see that automatically I get this edit image. And when I click on edit image, I have the option of adding in drop shadows. Now the issue that we have here is that Canva will allow you to apply drop shadows to images that you bring into Canva by uploading or importing. However, they will not, for the most part, allow you to add drop shadows to elements that they provide you with in their own program. And we obviously got this iPad from our elements, which means we cannot add a drop shadow to it. But I'm going to show you how to fix that as well. So as I mentioned, I had to flip this on its side. So you can see that this grass in the cloud is on its side. If I were to leave this as is and come over here to my uploads and grab the image of my iPad and swing it in here, you can see that my image is also going in the wrong direction. So we're going to have to um, take an extra step to make sure that that does not happen. All right, so let's go ahead and delete this out. 
I'm going to click here to add a new page. I'm going to come back over to my elements. I'm going to click on that iPad again. I'm going to swivel it around. Now, if you are dealing with a portrait style digital planner that you want to create an Etsy listing image for, you are still going to need to complete this step. Just don't change the orientation of the iPad, okay? I'll stretch this out. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to come up here to share. I am going to click on this download button. I'm going to change the file type so it says PNG. Now it's going to have to be PNG because we want to be able to give it a transparent background. So I'll click on that and then I'm going to select the page that I want to download. Go. I'll select done. And I'm going to choose to download. All right, so now here on the left hand side, I'm going to click on uploads. I'm going to choose to upload media. And I'm going to find that iPad and I'm going to open it. And that's going to bring that here into my uploads. So now I can come back on up here to this image. And I can click on this iPad within my uploads, not the elements, but the one you just brought into your uploads. And now you can see with it in here, this edit image op option comes up and that means that I'm going to now be able to add a drop shadow to it. So I'm going to make this bigger. Now I am going to point out that even though we can still see that cloud and the grass in here, you're no longer going to be able to just snap a picture right into this frame. But that's okay because I'm going to show you what we're going to do instead. Here we go. All right, so now I am going to make it just a little bit bigger. All right, so now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to select Edit Image. And I'm going to click on this shadow. I'm going to select drop shadow and I don't know why it does this. Sometimes when you click on shadows, it makes the image smaller, but what we'll do is after we've finished adjusting our drop shadows, I'll just resize it. And you can see that we have these lines in these circles here. That means that we can adjust the look of this drop shadow. And I'm going to choose to bring the blur all the way up because I want it to be a soft drop shadow that's going to make it look more natural. And I'm going to bring up the transparency a little bit to make that shadow just a little bit darker. There we go. And then I'm going to make sure that my drop shadow is in the bottom right-hand corner. It may be different for you. The reason why I'm choosing the bottom right-hand corner is because you can see all of the other images that I have brought into Canva, they also have a drop shadow in the bottom right-hand corner. Um, this block of wood here does, this pencil does, the flowers, um, even this little uh, banner right here. And even if it may not seem like it, if you were to just look at something with drop shadows going in all different directions, the picture's just going to look funny. You might not understand right off the bat why it doesn't look quite right, but you do need to make sure that all of your shadows are going in to the same direction just so that you have just that really pleasing look. All right, so once you have it how you want it, you can hit apply. There we go. And now I'm going to make this a bit bigger. All right, so once you have brought in your iPad, you've added the drop shadow and you've stretched out to be exactly the size that you'd like it to be, now it's time for us to figure out how to get the image of our digital planning page into this iPad. So I'm gonna come on over here to Elements. There we go. And I'm going to scroll down again until we find our frames once again. I will click See All. And then up here within the search terms, I'm going to type in iPad. 
and you will get two results. One is a frame that is in a portrait style and the other is a frame in landscape style. However, you will notice that these particular images um, they are just the screen of the iPad. They aren't the full iPad, and that is exactly what we want. Now, if you are um, creating an image for a portrait style um, digital planner, of course you're going to choose this portrait style image. But since we have a landscape, I'm going to select this one here on the right. And now I'm going to move it so it's sitting right here on top of the original iPad screen. And I'm going to stretch it out. Zoom in here a little bit. We want to make sure that it is exactly on top of that screen. You see how there's a little bit um, white sneaking through here? We don't want that. in a little bit more just to double check all right and that looks perfect okay so now we have a frame that is ready for us to drop in our planner image so I'm going to come on over here to my uploads and one of the biggest mistakes that I see Etsy sellers making when they are creating these Etsy listing images is they are not bringing in the correct size image for this screen and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. So right here, um, I'm going to click on this image, not to snap it in, but just to show you. Of course, it's going to give me a hard time. I'll delete this out. I'm going to come down here to this particular screen, and I'll bring it in here. All right, so you can see that this image right here not only is it my planner image, but it also has that toolbar that you get when you open up your digital planner within your note taping, taking app like GoodNotes or NoteShelf. This is what I'm going to need. And the easiest way to do this is to simply open up your planner within GoodNotes or NoteShelf, do a screenshot, and then send that image over here to Canva. However, what I see a lot of people doing instead is they will take just the, just the image itself of the planning page. So you can see that this does not have the toolbar up here. The problem with this is that it is, the size of this image is not the correct ratio, which means that it is not going to fit perfectly in here. It's going to be cut off on the edges. So let me just pull this in and show you what I mean. There we go. So you see, you cannot see the tabs on either side. And I see a lot of people posting their images just like this within Etsy, and the customer can't even see the whole planning page. You need to make sure that you don't do this. It takes a couple extra minutes, a couple extra steps to make sure that you do have that toolbar at the top, but I promise it is going to make all the difference. So I'm going to bring that out, and instead I'm going to come up here to that screenshot that has the toolbar on top, and I'm going to drag that in instead. There we go. So now you can see that this fits perfectly into that image, okay? So when the customer looks at this uh, listing image, they are going to know exactly what their digital planner is going to look like on their iPad. So now I'm going to select that frame that I brought in. I'm going to hold down the shift key, and I'm going to select the iPad that's sitting underneath it. I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to choose to group those together. Then I'm going to come up here and select position, and I'm going to move this backwards. And there we go. So now we have a very realistic iPad image that is going to show your customer exactly what they can expect to find when they purchase your digital planner and download it to their iPad using their note-taking app. And hopefully this helps you to create a very high quality image. If you have any questions about the steps that I have taken in creating this, do not hesitate to um, post a comment down below and I'll get back with you. But otherwise, I hope you found this to be useful. Um, if you did, make sure you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.